everybody, this is Laura with Madam Sew. I'm so glad you're joining me. Today I'm going to talk about quilt block sizes and how to incorporate multiple size blocks within one project. In order to demonstrate this technique, I'm going to be using this panel, which has a couple different block size options that we're going to choose from, but you don't have to use a panel to do these techniques, but I'm going to show you how to do a little bit of math to incorporate whatever size blocks you need for your project. Whatever panel you choose to use, the first thing you want to do is decide how many of the elements you're going to use in your project. Now for today's project, I'm going to use all of the elements because I'm going to walk you through how to sew together blocks of different sizes. And as you can see with this panel, we have a lot of size options to choose from. Now the next thing you want to do before you cut your panel is think about how much of the background color you'd like to see in the finished project as well. For these main three pictures here, I decided I don't want any of that background color in the final product. So I have cut these at a quarter of an inch around here just to allow for my seam allowance. And for these pictures down here, I've decided I do want a little bit of that green showing in the quilt. So I have cut these at a half of an inch around. And once you have all of your pieces cut from the panel, you are ready to start laying them out. And this is the fun part because you get to design how you want them to be laid out into your quilt. So let me show you what I've done for this panel. You can play around with different layouts with using whatever pieces you'd like to use from your panel. I've decided to make this black and white one the main picture within the finished quilt. And as you're laying them out, you can play with different layouts, like I said, and they don't have to be perfectly in place of where you want them. You can just kind of visualize where you'd like to see them. So this is my starting design for my quilt, and I'm going to be introducing some other blocks that will fill in the space around here, and you kind of see how this construction is coming together as a full quilt. When you have blocks of varying sizes like this and in different locations, you want to try to isolate certain parts of the quilt to make sure you can start with seams that make sense. For example, when I look at this entire thing and I'm thinking this is how I would like to lay it out in the full quilt, there are clearly spaces where lines are not going to match up. So I'm just going to take a chunk on the side and say here, the first thing I wanna do is fill in this line here and figure out how to make this be one kind of chunk. So these I've cut into four inch squares. So I'm going to make another block here that is also a four inch square. And because this measures nine and three quarters inches, we will do the math to figure out how much sashing we will need in between these pieces here. Now I have my four inch block. I made little snowball blocks for this because they kind of look like cherries. And what I'm going to do is lay them out visually where I want them to go. Now I know there is space here, but don't worry about that right now. We'll come back to that. Now again, in order to make this match this entire line, we're going to be adding some sashing in between. The first piece of sashing that I know I want to do is a line right down the middle here. And I'm going to keep that really short at a half of an inch. So I'm going to cut a one inch strip and it will be, it'll show a half an inch once it's finished. So I know that I will do sashing here and here around these blocks. So we can do the math to figure that out. Keeping in mind that I'm going to be doing the half inch sashing on the side here, I want to keep a consistent seam. I'm gonna match these up here and these up here so that I can take a look at what I want to do for in between the other blocks. So this is just getting a visual for what it will look like. I'm going to line all of these up now I want to do the same size of sashing between these blocks and this block. So I will have my half inch sashing here as well so that it will kind of frame each of those blocks. So I'm gonna start by sewing this sashing on the top and bottom of this piece here. Once I have my sashing pieces on here, I'm going to take a look at how much sashing I want to do in between these blocks here and here. Let's just take a look at this top section for now because it will be the same for the bottom half. I know I want to line this up along this edge, but now I want to add this extra block in here. 
Now there's a little bit of math involved here. If you want to do the math, it's not too complicated. What you do is you take the measurement here and then you measure what these are and then you just subtract that for the sashing. So for example, this measures nine and three quarters and I know each of these blocks is four inches, so that's eight. And then I have one and three quarters to work with because this is nine and three quarters and these together equal eight. And I would like to do double the sashing here as I have here and here. This will be a half an inch finished. So I'm going to do a one inch piece, which is cut at one and a half. And then I'll do the last three quarters of an inch on this side as well. So I'll probably cut it one inch just to be on the safe side and then I'll just trim the extra. So let's do that here and I will do that for the bottom half as well and we'll have our unit all finished here for this side of the panel. All right, I have my extra sashing on here to give that a nice rounded look here. These seams are all nice and square with each other. It's looking really nice and this measures 18 inches. Now you'll notice that this isn't the same length here. So the next thing we're gonna look at is remedying this long line here. So this is 18 inches. I measured my panel piece at 21 inches. So there's three extra inches that I need to add. So I just divide that into two. So that'd be an inch and a half. And I've added that to the top and bottom here of this piece I've already done. And I've also included my half inch sashing here that I will attach here. And then once it's all along here, we'll have a nice long seam to work with here on the top and the bottom. So if you want to leave it like this as a wall hanging or maybe a table runner, that would be wonderful. But if you want to add extra elements, like I'm going to incorporate those other elements from the panel. And I've made some extra blocks to go along with it. So I have more of these snowball cherry blocks and I've made some broken dishes blocks as well. And again, I'm dealing with four inch blocks because that's the same size as these cherry pieces. I thought it would be fun to incorporate more of those snow walls and then introduce this blue and yellow with the broken dishes block. And I wanted to incorporate more of that blue. So I'm going to place just a nice big rectangle at the top that's also cut at four inches so that we'll make this a big long strip. And of course I will just add, keep adding my sashing so that this background really plays up all of those cherries and makes this really darling. So I'm going to make this long strip here and add my sashing so that it will match this entire length at the top here. Now I'm down to just the last couple of steps for this quilt top. This top unit here, I'm going to sew together. I have this long one here. I will put one more piece of sashing all the way across here. And then I'm going to put this last panel piece in like I have it down here. And in order to make sure that it's centered on the pinwheels, I actually chose the pinwheel size first. I wanted those to be nice and large because they're so playful with that black and white. So I chose my pinwheel size first and then I'm going to do the math for this so that it measures right about in the middle of where the pinwheel lands. So this is a four inch piece and I've added two inch strips on the top and bottom of it to give it that centered look here. And then all I have to do is add these last couple of rectangles and it, I'll be all ready to go with that nice long piece of sashing and this quilt top will be all finished. Once you have the quilt top all finished, you can take a look at how fantastic it turned out. If you wanna add borders and make it bigger, you can. I'm thinking about adding a black border to just give it that extra bit of pop. When you look at a quilt from far away, it can be kind of overwhelming to understand all these different block sizes, but you know, once we break it down into sections, it's a lot easier, like how we did this section and this section and sewed it this way and then added the two top and bottom sections. You can really see how these quilts come together with different size blocks. And with just a little bit of math in there, you can figure out really any size block you wanna work with. I hope you had as much fun today on this project as I did. And don't forget to check out Madam Sew on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. And until next time, happy stitching.